Having to repeat work is not fun or productive. In this tutorial, we will see how to take advantage of the work that we already made in Power Query and then reuse some of the work in the same file in other queries. So welcome to the Snap Reports class. My name is Celia Alves and in this channel, I teach you ways of automating your work in Excel. If you want to follow along, this file will be available on my Telegram channel. The link is on the video description or on my bio. And thank you in advance for any feedback you may provide. This class is for you, so take advantage of it and leave your comments and your feedback. I do really appreciate that. And remember to like and subscribe, or of course, if you haven't yet, so that you can uh, keep up with the new content that I will be posting. Okay, so I received this question from one of the viewers on this video, how to copy a Power Query query from one Excel workbook to another one. So in this case, I was showing how to copy the entire query, one entire, one full query from one workbook to another one. But his question is different. TX Real wants to copy only some of the applied steps from one query to another query in that same workbook. He explained me that he has to repeat the same steps at the end uh, several times in multiple queries and he wanted to avoid having to do that manually. So let's see an example and see how we could solve that. In this file we have two different tables similar in their structure and we have two different queries that read from those tables. If we come to data, queries and connections, here on the right we will have the queries and connections pane double clicking in one of the queries it will open the power query editor for us and in there we will be able to see the two queries the data one query reads if we go to the source reads from the table one and applies these several steps and data two if we go to source reads from table two and applies only one step and now Let's imagine that we wanted to apply all these steps from removed other columns on, including that step up to the end, into, and we want to apply those same steps to this query data2. So what we can do is to come to the first query, data1, and come to view, or here in home, advanced editor, or view, advanced editor, it will take us to the ed advanced editor where we can see the code for our queries. And in here, we want to copy the code corresponding to step number two, the first step I want to copy, all the way down until the line after the in statement there. So right click and then control C or copy, right click, copy, click done. We don't want it to do anything there or cancel. And then come to the data to query again to the advanced editor and in here we want to remove these two lines we want to start to apply the first copied step after the filtered rows step so uh, delete that control v and now just a few tweaks that we need to do here let me put this bigger control shift plus will zoom in First thing is that the last step never has a comma at the end, but all the other steps need a comma at the end. So before this was the, the last step in query data 2, it now needs a comma. And then the first step that we copied into this code needs to refer to the previous step so that the transformation applied here, the function applied here, is applied to the result of the last step we had before. So Instead of source, we want to refer to this step. This step name is everything here before the equal sign, control C, and here remove that and control V to copy the name of the previous step. And we are all done. So now done. We will see the steps appearing here on the right side. And there you go now. Before we had just the sort and the filtered rows, and now I have all the other steps applied. Of course, the two tables were very similar, so that there will be no errors to fix in this case, because the two tables have the same structure. If we come here to the View tab and then Query Dependencies, we will see that these two queries are the only ones in the 
in our workbook and they are both reading data from the current work workbook. This is not important for our, this uh, scenario, but you will see why in the next sections. So in this case, we have two independent queries. Let's do close and I'm going to delete the data to query because I want to show you other ways of recycling your work. So one of the ways that we, in which we can take advantage of the work that I already did, that we have already done here in query data one, are different ways. One could be duplicate that query. So come here, right click and duplicate. Now we get a new query called data one number two. We can change the name to duplicate. Okay, and here we see that we have all the very same exact steps. So it's really a copy. We are copying all the steps, all the code from one query to another one. And maybe from here we could, we would want to make changes to some of these intermediate steps, delete some of them or add something else. So that's one way we can take advantage of the work already made before. Let's check the query dependencies in this case. It's similar to the previous one. In this case, we have two independent queries reading data from the current workbook and they are exactly the same, even the source for them is the same. So now I'm going to right click and delete this one and see other options. Another way could be to reference this query. If I do right click and reference, I get a new query, but in this case, this is not a copy of the previous one. Let's rename this query here, reference, enter, okay. And let's see what this query has. In this case, we have one step only, not a copy of all the steps before. This step's name is source, and if we see in the formula bar, is pointing to the data one query, meaning, Whatever we had at the end of the data one query, after applying all the steps, whatever the last step result is, it is this table. This table will be the source for this new query here. If we come to query dependencies, we now see something different than we had before. We now see that we have the data one query and then the reference query depends on the first one. Let's close, delete this query here. Let's see even other ways that we haven't seen yet. Let's imagine that I have this query data one with all these steps. And let's imagine that after removed other columns, I wanted to keep the result that I have in this step on a query and have the other steps, the other three steps separate on a second query. Maybe I want to keep the result of the step removed other columns as one uh, base that I will use for other queries. So imagining that I want to keep the source and removed other columns steps in one query, we can come to the next step, right click and do and choose extract previous. It is telling me extract the steps before the selected step into a new query. Okay, enter a name, let's call it base. Okay, and let's see what the result is. So now we have the base query with the first initial two steps. And then we have the data one query whose source, if we come to the source step, is the base one. So now this initial data one query is referring to the result of the base and then it has the remainder three steps applied in here. If we check the query dependencies, we now have something similar to what we saw before. The base query will be the first one reading data from the current workbook and then the data one query comes after and depending on the result of the base query, applying the last steps. So this option that we choose here, extract previous, uh, what it does is it splits the current query into two separate queries. I'm going to close without save. Let's enter the editor again. 
And one final thing that I wanted to show you, another option is uh, here in any one of the steps. If I wanted to delete from a certain point on, I can select that step, right click and choose delete until the end. So if I choose this option, are you sure you want to delete until the end? This will delete the current step and subsequent steps from your query. Delete. So if we do this, it will delete starting from the step split column by the limiter. We will be left with only the first two steps. Let's check. Delete. And there we go. So now we could, maybe we could have copied this query first and then we are deleting steps that we don't want. Let's close without saving. Discard. And just the last thing that I wanted to show you is that both the duplicate and reference options are also available in here in your Excel worksheet in the Queries and Connections pane. You can right click here, choose one of the options and then from here open the Power Query Editor and go from there. And that's it. These are the tips that I had for you today. By avoiding having to do extra work, we can boost our productivity. These techniques can also help you making your work more consistent. I hope you enjoyed these tips. If you did, or even if you did not, please leave your comment below. Um, there is more to learn about uh, Power Query, so remember to subscribe the channel and I will be posting more content about automation in Excel and with Excel. The file again is on my Telegram channel, link below. And thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye now.